Here we have a PS5 that came in for repair. The console turns on for a split second, then it goes back off. We already have the motherboard disassembled right here. Motherboard looks clean. I do not see anything obvious just by looking at the board with the naked eye, but we're going to go under the microscope and see if we see anything obvious. The last time I fixed an issue like this, I posted a video. It was a shorted capacitor. So we're going to check in the same area that we worked on last time and see if we find the same problem. But before we do so, I just want to quickly check on the HDMI connector, make sure everything is good here. Because PS5s are notorious for having bad HDMI connectors. The connector looks good. And the console was not sent here for an HDMI issue. Like I said, it turns on and then it goes back off after one second. But I just want to quickly check on the connector, make sure everything is good. We're going to quickly go over the board and maybe we can measure while inspecting the board. Put some stuff on the side. I have a lot on my bench and everything needs to be done expedited. Every single customer is mailing his device with a $95 check for expedited service. Expedited service is currently one to eight days and normal service is four to eight weeks. We do not have a short here. We do not have a short here. The last time we worked on a PlayStation 5 with the same issue, we had a problem, a shorted cap in this area. Right there, you see? Those are capacitors and they should not be shortened to ground. I do have a donor board right next to me. We can measure those same caps to verify this. Now look at this, you can tell I already used one of the caps to fix another PlayStation. If we measure here, we have a reading of 0 0.45 voltage drop. But on the customer's board, we have a short to ground. We do not know which cap is causing the short, if in fact the short is coming from any one of those caps. But what we're going to do is we're going to inject voltage at any one of those caps. They are all in parallel. And then we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot. Which cap gets hot. Like I said, if in fact the problem is from any one of those caps. If we inject voltage here. I'm injecting 1.5 volts and we have a 1.8 amp draw. And let's inject voltage and see what happens. One and two and three. Look at this, something is heating up right over here and not at the caps. Watch. We're going to try this again. So if we inject voltage at any one of the caps, something is heating up right over here, right over here. But there's nothing here. The problem is not from the four caps. The problem is not from any one of the four caps because we are not seeing heat in this area, but rather I'm seeing heat right over here. We do not have any components here. So let's flip the board and see what's on back of the board. On back of this area, we have this. We do have some capacitors and a chip, meter in diode mode. And what do we get if we measure this cap? We got a short, a dead short. Wow. What about here? 0 0.53 voltage drop. We do not have any issues here. Wow. And if we measure in resistance mode, one probe on ground and one probe here. 
we have a that short, a zero ohm resistance between ground and either side of the capacitor. That short. If we grab the donor board that I have right in front of me, I just want to make sure that that's what we should be reading. One probe on ground and one here. We have a 447 ohm reading. Ground here and 447 ohms here. And we have 543 ohms here. If we measure here, we have 0 0.44 voltage drop. And if we measure here, we have 0 0.54 voltage drop. And that's the normal reading. So we know that we have a short on this area of the board. And we know the short is not coming from the four caps that we went over before we flipped the board. So the problem right now could either be this cap, this cap, which I highly doubt. I believe it would be this cap or it would be the chip, either one. This one is measuring good. A small cap usually does not go bad. Almost always a big cap is what shorts out. So we can start by desoldering the cap and see if we can get rid of the short. If that happens, then the problem is the cap. If we desolder the cap and we still have a short, then the problem is most likely the chip. Most likely. Let's do it. Apply just a tiny bit of flux so we can help with the flow of solder. We do not need to apply flux when we desolder but adding flux will speed up the process because flux helps with the flow of solder. Fume extractor on. The capacitor looks mint. It looks perfect to me, but you can never tell by the shape of the capacitor. You have to remove it and see if the capacitor is what's causing the short. Most electronic problems are caused by capacitors. And we can put it on the side, but the cap doesn't want to let go. Let's get rid of the glare. Beautiful. The anti-glare light is magic. If you do not already have one, just log in to northwitchfix.com, click on shop, add to cart, buy, and we almost always ship out same day. As many of you already know, a lot of you are already customers. We carry and sell everything from hot air stations, soldering stations, Thermal camera, power supplies, grinding pan, flux, braid wick, tweezers, whatever we use on our bench here, we carry and sell in our shop. Everything is in stock. Just add whatever you want to cart, check out, and we almost always ship out same day. We're actually one of the very few distributors of the flux. You cannot buy genuine Amtec flux off eBay or Amazon or AliExpress or Alibaba. You can buy it from us, northwitchfix.com. Meter in diet mode. And let's see, do we have a short? And we still have a short. So the problem is not the cap. We're going to put the cap back. And we're going to move on. Move on with our life. done so what we're gonna do right now is remove the chip and see if the short is caused by the chip I'm not gonna go for this tiny cap because I highly doubt the problem is the tiny cap but of course I may be wrong for now I'm just gonna go for the chip I'm using a narrow nozzle, so it's pushing a lot of air. Let me put airspeed down. We do not want components to fly away, like this one here, trying to escape 
and that's because we have a narrow nozzle. Bigger nozzle means more heat transfer. Smaller nozzle or narrower nozzle means that the nozzle is going to push a lot of air and not enough heat transfer. Small nozzle is good if you want to aim at one small area, but for a chip like this, it's recommended to have a bigger nozzle. Now we're going to check and see if we still have a short. Let's clean up. Do we still have a short? And look at that, we still have a short. Why? Is it possible that we may have a problem here with this tiny one? The one I overlooked? Is that even possible? I know we do not have a short on the right cap, the one that we have here, because we measured. But I overlooked this one because I did not think that a short circuit could be coming from this tiny guy right here. Tiny guy causing big problems. Do we have a short? Wow, 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 unbelievable. Unbelievable. We have a problem with this tiny guy. Small guy is causing a lot of problems. We got it. Who would have thought that the small guy is the one causing the problems? Look at how much bigger this guy is, and he's not causing any problems. But this tiny guy here, he just hatched from the egg. He's causing the problems. We no longer have a short. The problem is this guy. What can you do? This guy want to play games. We'll just get rid of him. Replace. Of course, no offense to tiny people. I'm talking electronics. Do not get offended. I don't care if you're tall, short, fat, skinny, black, white, green, purple. Everyone is equal. And everyone is unique in their own ways. No two humans are the same. It's just that people want to be copies. They want to copy. You're original. You were born original. Stay original. You don't like the way your nose look, your eyes, your ears, your height. That's the way you are. You are unique in your own ways. Have more self-confidence and and just know that you are unique. Let's go to the donor board and we're going to grab that cap from here. Add floats. And let's grab that component. That's the one that we need. I do not know what the value is. But the value should not matter that much. In our case, we are grabbing exactly the same value component from a donor board. But in case you do not have a donor board, it doesn't matter that much what the value is. Like if you have 100 people pulling the rope and you have one small guy, he exited the game. He's not pulling the rope with you anymore. It's not going to make that much of a difference. And we have to solder the chip back. And let's get rid of the glare again. You can see me switch between anti-glare and the ring light. I got different views with each one of them. Sometimes I combine both. And that's why I always mention you need both the ring light and anti-glare light. You have full control of how you see the image when you have your anti-glare light on or your ring light on or both of them combined. Maybe I can have more anti-glare than ring light. I can have my anti-glare all the way up and maybe my ring light just a tiny bit down. 
Like, let me turn my ring light on. I have control. Maybe I have a shadow that is casted by a long, tall component. I want to get rid of that shadow. I turn my ring light on. Right now, I do not have any shadows from tall components because I do not have any tall components nearby. But let's say I go here. You see how we have that tall capacitor? And the capacitor is casting a shadow. The anti-glare light is not going to get rid of that shadow because the light is being blocked by this cap. And the light coming from this side is being blocked by that cap. So we have a shadow in the middle. In that case, I turn on my ring light and we get rid of that shadow. So a combination of both is sometimes magic. Sometimes I turn one on and the other off or vice versa. Like here, if I turn off my anti-glare light, we see glare. We see a lot of glare. I want to get rid of the glare. I turn the ring light off and anti-glare light on. Done. Both the ring light and the anti-glare light can be purchased off our site, as well as our Northridge Fix V2 microscope that we are currently using. Best quality you can get your hands on. Just compare the quality of our microscope with other content creators and you'll know. Just press and hold. And we're done. Of course, we're not going to leave those solder balls as decorations. Unless it's a holiday, then I can keep them. we're good we're done clean up and then I'm gonna hand over the console to Big Boss to reassemble and test and we can finish the video with Big Boss testing the console meter in diet mode and do we still have a short we have ground here and we have 0 0.436 voltage drop all right, we're good. done let me grab the camera turn it on will it turn back off after one second yes it did not turn back off but we want to see an image on the screen still running it did not go back off awesome yes yes Wow. Big Boss is the best. Yeah. Boss of all bosses. Thank you. Thank you, Big Boss. Let's see what's going on here. My dad is taking care of all the shipping. 
Big Boss want to clean the fan because the console is already open and the fan does not look good. A lot of dust. Look at this. Look at the condition of the fan. So we do not just keep the fan inside the console like this. If we open the console, we're going to clean it. Nice. The fan is clean. And that's it. We are done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video.